So in the previous tutorial, we figured out how we can actually create um, these sub nodes, which we're going to be using to develop all of the materials that we want to make for this mesh. And so while that was probably pretty informative and kind of fun to do, um, you can see that there is a lot that really goes into setting up these graphs in particular. And if we can kind of help streamline that process for ourselves, uh, why wouldn't we, right? And so that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video, is just figuring out how we can create somewhat of a standardized or general template that's going to allow us to really rapidly start to develop these materials without really having the hassle of setting up input base color, set that in the material group, et cetera, et cetera, you know, all the way down to your ambient occlusion uh, input node. So the first thing I want to do to set that up is I'm going to go ahead and create a separate package. So up in here, I'm going to just right click new package. And in this unsaved package, I want to right click new substance graph. I'm going to do PBR metallic roughness again. And ideally, by the time we're done with this video, whenever we start a new substance graph, we're going to be able to come into here and select our material group graph template, and it will set all of this stuff up for us. So to start off this series though, or this video, I'm going to just do PBR metallic roughness. I'm going to call this graph something that I'm going to uh, remember. So I'm going to call this mega phone template. And again, you can call this whatever you want, but this is going to essentially be the name of your template when it shows up here. So choose something that uh, maybe makes more sense to you. If you maybe want to use this in other projects, just call it my node template, whatever, so on and so forth. So again, I'm going to leave all these parameters just as they are and hit OK. And the first thing that I'm going to do, just like the uh, previous graphs before, is I'm going to get rid of this height because we're not going to be using it. I'm also going to get rid of all of these inputs here so that we only have our outputs. I'm now going to come up to our chord graph here because we had already kind of set up the, uh, the input and the output nodes how we wanted them before. So instead of doing all that work over again, I'm just going to be able to find them, copy them, and paste them into our new template. So again, here's our base color. I'm going to click on that guy. Here is our ID map here. So if I select that guy there, again, control and left click. Here is our normal, and I'm going to control and click that. Our roughness, control click. Metallic control click and ambient, con uh, ugh, ambient occlusion control click. So, with those all selected, I'm going to just hit control and C to copy. And when I come into our megaphone template, I'm going to control V and it's going to paste all these nodes in the exact, uh, the exact same configuration as they were in our previous graph. So Depending on how screwy your <laughs> last graph was, that might be a bit of a uh, guessing game as to where everything's going to show up. But we've pretty much got the gist of it here. And the reason I did that is, if you can think back to the, the previous video, right? In our nodes, we set up the identifier, the label, the group, and the usage for each one of these. And I'm just too lazy to go back and do all of that again. So we've got these set up. I'm now going to plug this in to the appropriate outputs there. And I'm also going to come over to our ID map here and add a color to mask node. And so pretty much we've entirely replicated the basis of what we want our node template to be like. Um, the last thing I'm going to do, and this is a totally optional uh, thing, but it might help you again just further improve the readability of these graphs. Is I'm just going to add frames around the different areas so that we can kind of contain the areas to understand what each region is doing of our graph. And what I mean by that 
is this right here is our base color. And this is our base color chain, right? We have information coming in from our parent graph, going through and doing a bunch of different calculations in this graph here, and then coming in being output again. So we can think of this as our base color uh, chain. Well, I wanna just comment or frame this so that I know this is my base color from a glance. And you can see right where my mouse is up here, we have frame. So I've selected these two, and I'm just going to hit frame. And this is going to put a frame around this so that whenever we are far away, we can go, oh, yep, yeah, this is our base color here. And we can also drag this group around whatever is in this frame. And you can see too, right, if I drag this outside the frame and start moving it around, it's not going to drag uh, this guy over here because he's not within the frame. We can also expand the frame in any direction to include extra tidbits. And likely what we'll be doing as we start to develop our future graphs is we're going to be expanding and pulling this frame bigger and bigger so that we can fit all of these nodes inside. But keeping on top of this, as we go, you know, it's kind of like tidying up as you work or um, cleaning dishes as you cook. It's going to allow you to be more efficient in coming back to this graph and going, ah, this is what this does and this is what this region of my graph is. So again, I'm, I tend to uh, ramble and rant a little bit, but I find that it's pretty informative. And if you don't like to hear my voice, you can skip through the videos anyway. So <laughs> um, with that, if we click on our frame, we can change the title of it. And I'm going to change this to base color. And you can also add a description. And where the description actually shows up, if I just drag this guy over and go, this is a description and click away it's actually going to start adding it in your frame so if you want to kind of describe what this frame is for um, or what it does maybe you are going to be handing this project off to somebody else that you work with to uh, to use or to start developing on this might be a good way to just kind of tell them hey this is what this frame is for now, if you're working on your own, you, you're going to kind of understand what these are for. So I generally don't tend to use them, but they are there in case you want it. And lastly, we can actually change the color of these frames. You can make them any kind of fancy colors you want. You can change the alpha of them, right, just to make them pure alpha. Uh, I like to have them a little transparent because, you know, I'm feng shui or chic or whatever it is the kids are saying nowadays. So I'm going to do something, a little funky color like that. And this is going to help just break up the distinction between uh, what each of these do. So we're not going to need too much more explanation. I'm just going to go ahead and frame all of these. All right, and so this is going to just help us again break up some uh, monotony and give us some visual indication as to what everything is. This is totally an optional thing. You don't really need to. It's just more for organization. But now that we've got that done, we're going to need to figure out how we can actually uh, implement this into our future projects, right? How do we actually get this into Substance Designer and say, hey, give me this option for this setup the next time I want to uh, create a new graph. And so in order to do that, we first need to save this guy. So again, I'm going to come up to my package, just going to want to save it. And we're going to need to figure out a place that we want to save this in. And again, this very much like when we were importing versus linking our mesh maps into the project, this needs to be an area that you aren't going to move around because Substance Designer needs kind of a consistent place where it can look to extract the information to use this graph. Um, and if you're moving that around and breaking the file path, Substance Designer is going to have a difficult time figuring out where the heck this package is that it's supposed to draw this and reference this information from. So make sure that wherever you're saving this graph or this package, that it is in a place that you are pretty much not going to touch it anymore. 
So I'm just going to save it within the actual Gumroad package here on my desktop. And I'm going to call it Megaphone Template and just save that. And so now the way that we're going to access this in Substance Designer is I'm going to come up to Edit and Preferences, come down to Projects. I'm going to come down to General. And you can see that Substance uh, has this Substance Templates directories. And this is where we're going to be able to import uh, new templates that we create. So I'm going to come over to this little plus sign here. I'm going to go find the area, the folder with which my uh, template actually resides in. And this is my uh, directory with the actual substance file. And I'm going to select folder. And so now we've created a new file path where we're going to be able to find this graph. And I'm just going to hit apply. And so now if I hit OK, I can come up to my file and new substance. And you can see that down at the bottom here, we have this new megaphone template. And if I hit OK, you can see that we've just loaded up a new package with a new graph. And it is exactly the same as the template that we've just created, which is going to help expedite the speed with which we're going to be able to start developing these materials. So in this tutorial, we've taken a look at how to create a template that's going to allow us to speed up the process of developing these graphs and making these materials, as well as maintaining consistency across each of our graphs. In the next video, we're going to take a look at actually putting this template to the test. And we're going to go ahead and start making four different materials that we're going to add on our parent graph towards making our final material.